Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hello, everybody. It's Sunny and Shar, and today is June 23rd, 2018. It is the 23rd, right? It was the... No, no, it's the 23rd. Oops, I'm sorry. Today's June 22nd, 2018. Are you sure? But the first day of, of um, okay, I'm sorry, guys. You know what? I'm much better with the dead than I am with the living. So, um, okay, so, oh, oh, you're right. It's June 22nd. See, I don't believe anybody unless I see it myself. Now, uh, what's been going on at our borders is horrendous. The children who are being separated from their parents is devastating. And, you know, we live in a, in, in, in a physical world, but we also live in a spiritual world. And, and, in this, in, and we are judged when we cross over to the spirit world by our deeds. And that's how we accrue our karma. Not everything's predestined in life. Only some things are. <clears throat> Excuse me, but but what happens is life is our school. We're here to learn lessons, and it's all about the choices we make. And did we make choices with compassion and love, and with heart? And the thing that's that I can't believe our country has done this to these poor people who are trying to escape a a, a world of of murderers and devastation. I can't believe that, you know, it, sa it says on our Statue of Liberty, give me, give, a, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, your wretched refuge of your teeming shore. Send these a homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. When my grandfather came from Russia a zillion years ago, if they didn't let him in, I wouldn't be here, including a bunch of everybody listening, and a, most of the United States wouldn't be here because we we all came as immigrants. Now, my biggest pet peeve about this whole thing are the children's separation anxiety. I really am concerned because the damage is already done. Okay, so 500 kids are back with their parents now, supposedly, but what about those 2,000 other kids, and what about what's going to happen in the future? You know, I'm just going to tell one quick story, and then I've got a guest here who's a psych an amazing psychologist, and she's going to help us figure all this out and find some healing, hopefully, in, in this whole situation. But there's a, there was a little girl who came from, I guess, El Salvador, and uh, her when her, she was with her mother, and her mother talked to her sister, the mother's sister who lived in Texas. And I guess there's two sisters in Texas. And the sisters in Texas said, the little girl, six years old, said, you make sure that your daughter memorizes my telephone number. That's the most important thing. Have her memorize a telephone number. Well, lo and behold, the little girl was found on TV and she was, she's, she was the one that was spotted or one of the ones that was spotted, and and her care person at, at the border said, with all this um, anxiety and craziness these kids were going through, this little girl kept her mind, kept, kept, kept it together, and said, my aunt is waiting for me. This is her telephone number. They made her memorize it, thank God. And she remembered it, and but the, the aunt was so adamant about making sure in case the mother and the child were separated, which is what happened. 
So now the 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 care person at the border said, you know, the, most kids don't even know their their names, let alone a telephone number that they can contact somebody to help them. So that's actually a positive story in this. But um, okay, so today I have Dr. Liliana Wolf, and she's an amazing psychologist. And also a very spiritual person. I love this woman's soul. She's kind and she's good-hearted. And she just cares about healing and helping people. And um, Liliana, uh, okay, so Liliana, you, can you hear me? I can hear you very Okay, well. great. Could you turn that up a little bit for me, Tony? Okay, thanks. Okay, so you're a licensed psychologist and you, you've been in private practice, private practice for 26 years, huh? Well, I have been in private practice, I would say, for um, about 20 years. And the other years that I have been preparing for it, you know, doing practicum and so forth. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's great. And um, let's see. Oh, you have a bachelor's degree in Spanish. Yeah, Spanish literature. With a concentration mm-hmm. in Latin American culture. And you're in Miami or Florida yeah. somewhere. Where yeah. are you? Exactly. Coral Gables, Florida. Coral Gables, Florida. Okay. And, um, wow, you have a lot of affiliations with the American Psychological Association, American Counseling Association, International Association of Marriage and Family Counselors, Mm -hmm. and the Florida Bar Family Division. Right. Zero to three. What does that mean, zero to three? Oh, zero to three is an organization that focuses on the early childhood. The very first years of, you know, development. Okay, so community. I have to tell you what happened today. I've been wanting somebody to come on who's an expert with child psychology. And I tried to get my sister, Dr. Tisdale, who I will have on again in the future. But she had a commitment that it's the only Friday she couldn't do this. And mm-hmm. so I kept saying to Nicole, I've got, I've got to find somebody who's a psychologist, who's an expert with children. I've got to find this. So today, uh, you know, I usually do my readings in the morning and I had a Skype reading and I put in the ladies, the girl's name who had kind of a similar name to your first name. And all of a sudden your name popped up and I went, oh, my God, Liliana Wolf. She Dr. Wolf. She's perfect. She's perfect for this. And so I felt like the universe and the gods were guiding you and the angel said you need to bring and then you were available and you so thank you so much absolutely i'm in new orleans char i'm um attending a conference actually of a group of um psychotherapies from different parts of the united states that we are working on you're gonna hear it attachment the science of attachment that starts you know we know now a lot of it it starts in the womb Wow. Start to our parents in the womb. That's crazy that you're oh, no. you're dealing with that now. You know, I, I just I don't want to talk about me, but I just have to say my mother always said she went to kindergarten twice. <laughs> Once when she went to kindergarten and for over a month with me. So um, I, I had that attachment, that yeah. separation anxiety thing with my mommy. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about. OK, so let's. Let's talk about these children at the border. What well, what do you think is going on really with them and how damaging is this separation going to be to them throughout their lives? Well, uh, I think an important element here is to talk about attachment, which is we are born to connect. This is not something that we learn Uh, This is something that is already embedded in every single human being. Mm -hmm. So our, the presence of our parents uh, or our main caregivers who for the majority of us, luckily it's our parents is already within all of us because it's going to carry out, you know, through our life. Initially it's our parents, then we'll start, uh, you know, connecting with other members of society and eventually with a significant other in life, our partner, our children, and so forth. Now, so the building blocks are already, you know, starting to form in the womb as we connect with our mothers, right? Mm-hmm. Now, um, what it's not what we think, it's what we know 
there is a whole science right now. It's the science of attachment because we have a lot of research data right now that supports the notion that our brains start to develop and we create neural pathways mm -hmm. based on these connections mm -hmm. and they carry out and protect us throughout life. So events like the, what has already taken place are very traumatic events. And some of them, depending on the length of the separation, uh, meet criteria for what we call now, uh, I say now because it's very recent mm -hmm. information that we have about toxic stress. You know, toxic stress is the kind of stress that a child has been exposed to for an extended period of time. We see it with children that were abused, mm -hmm. children that were neglected, mm -hmm. children whose parents abused drugs, for example, mm -hmm. or in prolonged separation from main um, principal, you know, care caregivers as mm -hmm. well. And that has been found to have long lasting effects. It's not just psychological, it's also uh, taking um, an impact, having an impact on their brain structure what we call the neural pathways mm -hmm. become truncated as a result of prolonged um, you know, exposure to what we call environmental insults, events mm -hmm. that are very traumatic. And, and I would think it's compounded by all the other little kids crying for their parents. Absolutely. And if you think about it, you know, um, not only are these children unaware of what is the future, they don't probably have any idea whatever happened to their parents, you know, and that's one when they're going to see them. But we don't know their history. Some mm -hmm. of these children may have already been exposed to violence in their country of oh, origin. Oh, that's true. And or may have already been themselves neglected due to poverty as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. now we are adding to this fact that the only source of their, uh, you know, a sense of safety is no longer there for them. So they must feel very isolated, mm -hmm. very much uh, unable to cope, literally unable to cope. Oh my goodness. So yeah. how is this, can they get healed in any way? I mean, well, yes. I mean, important factors come into play. The length of the separation is an important factor. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was saying a moment, saying a moment ago, um, if there were other environmental insults, they may interact with this. They may, some, for some of them, unfortunately, it's going to be more devastating um, mm -hmm. than for others. There are what we call protective factors, events that, uh, you know, may protect them. And like, then hopefully like what? Because, yes. Like they what? Would, like what? For example, if they have had, a, uh, they have experienced a very solid foundation at home mm -hmm. they always trusted their parents they had very good wholesome experience up to now uh, even though they may show some signs of acute stress disorder for example if they are reunited with their parents these initial symptoms may subside and they may not may not become what we could be afraid of which may have long-lasting effects as post-traumatic stress disorder or Post, PTSD. Oh, that makes sense. Post-traumatic stress disorder, because Absolutely. they think it's going to keep happening. Uh, yes. What happens with uh, the difference between acute stress is, is as a result of um, an event, which could be a stressor that is traumatic, like separation from your parents, mm -hmm. you may start exhibiting symptoms that are very similar for PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, for example, you may have uh, nightmares, recurrent nightmares. Uh, flashbacks of the separation, uh, reliving the unfortunate experience when they separated you from your parents, when you saw them for the first time, perhaps your mother was crying or your father was crying. And that must be very unsettling for a child. You know, they see a, their protective uh, uh, figures already under tremendous stress. And Do you know, grieving. there was one man at the border the other day who mm -hmm. gave up his three-year-old son to them and then shot himself in the head, killed himself. Oh, my God. As you see, I mean. And so now this little boy, three years old. And unfortunately, what we know about this child, I mean, and the youngest, you know, the, the younger you are, 
uh, unfortunately, um, you know, there may be uh, other kind of consequences. And in this particular case, for example, there is a lot of uh, data that we have regarding early paternal or maternal loss. In other mm -hmm. words, losing your parent at an early, early age, mm -hmm. you know, and may have devastating consequences. As a result of suicide, your chances of, for this particular child mm -hmm. and or for any child mm -hmm. whose mm -hmm. parent has committed suicide, mm -hmm. the chances mm -hmm. of themselves committed suicide double, you know? Wow. So, yeah, unfortunately, that child is already at risk. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. For later on in life. So, uh, yeah. So, Dr. Liliana, what has happened in our society? What has happened to compassion? Mm. What has happened to love? What has happened to love thy neighbor as thyself? What has gone on here? What's going on? Well, let me tell you one thing. I do believe that there are more people that express and manifest love and compassion. We have to say, uh, perhaps our uh, leaders are unaware of um, the kind of data that we have now. Uh, in other words, they don't match the policies mm -hmm. with the science. To And I think it's important, mm -hmm. but the majority of us are raising our voice we have about 115,000 mental health clinicians in American Psychological Association mm -hmm. who wrote a letter to our president explaining precisely what you and I are talking about that, about now, the detrimental effects of this making this separation long term. So, um, and I think that enough voices have been raised to say, okay, we stop this mm -hmm. and let's try to fix it now. Let's try to stop the damage. And I think that as a result of the compassion of, of most of us, these changes are going to be implemented. And hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, before new policies are put into effect, mm -hmm. um, we will that, that have an impact on children in particular, you know, mm -hmm. will be thought of in a, a, in a more um, detailed way. Yes. They're, they're also saying that the parents have already been shipped off to other states and other places and that the foster care system is going to be overloaded with children mm -hmm. and that our government already can't afford the foster care services that we do have. It just, it's just overwhelming to me of, and let me tell of what's you, going on. Um, HR, one of the things that I, I will tell you is that one of the worst nightmares for any child is to lose their parents. Right. And you think about it for a minute. It doesn't matter whether your father or mother are poor or they, they are middle class. I mean, you want to be with them because that's where you get, like I said, attachment. Right. You know, that's your source of support in life. Right. It gives you a sense of safety. That's where you get your nourishing, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of your emotions and um, you feel safe with your parents. Mm -hmm. So um, to to now for them to go into the foster care system. Mm -hmm. What we know about, you know, foster care um, system with children, for example, if a child has been abandoned, um, you have right now, you know, in our country, we have the foster care or adoption, right? Um, when we look mm -hmm. at them longitudinally, in other words, we follow them through the years, the children that were placed for adoption, versus the children that were in the foster care system. Mm -hmm. The ones that were in the foster care system fare the worst, you know? And mm -hmm. that's because you have no parents. And we do the best we can. Now, in this particular case, those children have parents. Right. You know, so if you think about it, by the time they get back, you know, we have to be able to provide for those children now some mental health services. And let's not forget, the parents also will need mental health um, oh, services. Yeah. 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 And of we're course, releasing right? those children back to those parents who will also be affected by this, <clears throat> you know, and who have to then start uh, building up their own coping mechanisms. 
to be able to be there for those children. So mm -hmm. I think that um, we have hurt families altogether, children and individually, unfortunately, as well as the parent. So, you know, figures. So hopefully there will be a stop to this now. That is but, what it's. But, I think. but then they're saying that they can only hold, if a child is with the parent now, they can only hold them for 20 days. Okay. Like the child can only be held for 20 days. Um, so there may, there may be something. So that then what? But yeah. at least they're with the parent and they can organize it and the parent will know where the child is and they'll know how to organize it. Absolutely. I mean, this is like mayhem. I mean, this is like total chaos. If you think about it, we are focusing on the separation on one end, which mm -hmm. is, I think, the critical aspect of this whole thing, mm -hmm. right? But we also have to look into the effects of the stress of, of being just an immigrant or refugee mm -hmm. and not having really a roof over your head. Right. That is, that, you know, the sense of safety of your family in a foreign land. Um, you don't have the financial means to to take care of yourself or your child. So all these are what we call stressors that are, that can have devastating long, you know, term effects. I and wonder, I, I, you know, I, we didn't do enough research today cause we did this so last minute, but I wonder where people can go hmm. if they want to donate their time or help or it, are they allowed are like Americans allowed to go into those borders states and, and help those poor little kids. A very good question. Very good question. I really am unaware of what we can do. You know, besides so, pray, we can pray. Yes, but but your question is, I think it's a very important one. What can we do? You know, as a society, to be you know what? To if anybody here is listening, if you can like either call in or or put it on Facebook. If you know of any organizations that are doing something to help these kids or where there's going to be some psychological assistance, if you could let us know. And Nikki, if, if you can like just text Tony and tell him so we, or text me it, like if somebody here has that information, just let us know. Cause that would be really helpful as well. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so, it's it's amazing that you're in a that you're at a conference now about attachment. It's unbelievable that yeah. I swear yeah. to God your your name yeah. popped up on my computer. I swear to God. I believe you. I believe you. I believe and I, you. I, I I look at my computer maybe once a, a you know it depends and maybe twice a week or something because I'm usually yeah. on my other devices. Yes. Well, um, it is emotionally focused therapy. Mm -hmm. So a, a group of clinicians, we're 20, um, we are working, we are, you know, doing role play, and uh, we are perfecting our skills for, um, you know, we call it emotionally focused therapy, but it's a, 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 about attachment science, you know, and um, basically, that's the, the most successful kind of couples therapy at mm -hmm. this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, you made me think about maybe some of the kids hopefully will get into places where they'll have a better situation mm -hmm. than if they were abused at home. I mean, you never really know, but it's still like devastating. They got to be with their mom and their dad. Yes, I think it is uh, crucial for their yeah. development. Yeah. That they have the sense of safety. So. You're doing workshops and you, you've got workshops in Miami and you've got yeah. um, Hold Me Tight and that's science-based experimental workshops for couples. That's right. Wow. Yes. Hold Me Tight. And for the first time, we're going to have in Miami, uh, talking about immigrant population, we have a lot of uh, immigrants and new immigrants. The Venezuelans are our new immigrants right now. Right. So, um so we are going to have for the first time, hold me tight in Spanish. Abrazame fuerte. Oh, that's community. amazing. Yes. 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 That's amazing. And then you have the Daring Way. The Daring Way. And, and what's that workshop? Song. Well, that this is based on Brene Brown. Brene Brown is um, one uh, PhD in social work that has done 
amazing work on shame resilience. Mm -hmm. And her TED Talk it has over 34 million viewers. Wow. And um, it's a beautiful work. It's really transformational. It is about falling down, really, mm -hmm. about showing up, being seen, and being brave. And it's for teens and women. Well, I have, I'm starting out with a group for teens, you know. That's uh, amazing. Yes. And a group for women. Uh, women are the ones that we have a lot of shame. We are shamed in different areas of our lives. So it's about, you know, uh, daring to show up, be seen, be brave, and fall down and get up. That's what, what it's this all about. Yeah, like be proactive and don't let anyone or anything stop you, right? Absolutely, yes. Because yes. nobody has power over us unless we give it to them. Absolutely. Right? right. And then yes. you're doing the Rising Strong workshop in that science-based. Oh, yes. that's it. That's the, yes. the that's it. Strong that's the Rising Strong. Way are two workshops for, um, that are science-based and um, that I'm um, going to be having. And, it's and how can how can people is this is this online or just in person in Miami oh, this, is, this is in person but I will be taking holy tide in different parts of the country okay this yes. is good yes. and maybe you can do some online as well because I'm sure that everything you're doing because I know that you're you always come from a healing kind place I just know you a healing kind loving place and and how do people get a hold of you uh, they can, um, you know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Okay, but and, what are, what are those oh, names? Um, in um, I'm Liliana Wolf, L I L I A N A W O L F. Uh, you can just look at me, um, www. Uh, dr like doctor Liliana L I L I A N A uh, Wolf. Uh, dot com. That's my website. Oh, and, okay. So th they can go to your website and find everything else. So it's yeah. Dr. com. You guys, exactly. Dr. com is how you can get a hold of Dr. Liliana Wolf. And um, maybe you can join one of her workshops or maybe your kids need it. You know, it, she's, I mean, uh, God knows we all need help. Nobody's perfect. I'm always working on myself. I know that. <laughs> And I know that most people, if you think you know it all, you really don't. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you so much for being here. I, I appreciate yeah. it. Anytime. Charles. And, and so I'm, I'm very grateful, and I hope that we can do this again. Absolutely, anytime. Okay, great. Anytime. You've been wonderful, and thank you so much. Take good thank care. You. Okay, everybody, I'm going to be doing readings. Are the phones lit up? Nikki must have told everybody I'm doing, she must, the, she must have spilled the beans. So, all right, let's take a caller. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go away. I might be reading for you next. Hey, everybody. You probably think I only do individual readings, but sometimes I get a message for everybody. And I wrote a poem that was channeled through me, and I'd like to read it to you. It's called Until We Meet Again by Char Margolis, A Message from Heaven. My work is done. It's time to leave. Know that I am also missing you as you grieve. I completed my karma on the earth, and now it is time for my rebirth. I'm flying with eagles and dancing on stars. Please know that I haven't gone far. The love we have will carry us through until the day I am again with you. What an amazing journey this passing over can be. I am in good company. I know you hurt, but please trust me. Our journey together is for eternity. So until the day our souls reunite, stay peaceful and well and use your spirit sight. I will bring you signs from up above, a butterfly, a bird, my sign of love. Don't worry about me. I'm in good hands. Stay strong, stay positive, and continue to pray. When it is your natural day to graduate from the earth, look for me in the bright white light. We have completed our purpose, and all will be right. This is handmade. It's signed by me. It's an affordable 
gift for any occasion, just go to Shar.net and click on Store. Thank Hi, you. Hi, everybody. It's Shar. Well, many of you have asked if I teach psychic intuition, and I do. Everybody has a sixth sense. Everybody has an ability to prevent problems and attain goals in their lives. And I'd love to teach you. Just go to char.net, C-H-A-R-N-E-T, and join one of my classes and call Nikki and she'll help you out. Remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Okay, I just want to say one more thing about what's happened at the border. Just the thought of separating somebody from their parents, just the action is... Go, that karma is going to come back tenfold on whoever has done that. That's all I can say, because what goes around comes around. And, you know, the power of love is the most powerful energy there is. I do believe in karma, and I know. Right, Tony? I've lived to see what goes around comes around. I've lived to see it. I personally would not want that karma. Okay, now I'm going to read for you guys. Let's get a caller in. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Okay, so um, just be open-minded about everybody living and deceased, okay? Okay. And don't say any names unless I say it, then you can repeat it. But don't just think of one person or one thing. you got to be open about everybody, okay? Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm picking, I usually get initials and names I hear phonetically. I'm getting like a Robert or D, a D or an R. Or a D or B hmm. initial. Are you there? No, I can't think. I'm here. Yeah, I just can't. Is think there of a anything. middle name? Is there a middle name like this? And the other thing I was getting was an M. An M. Yeah. Do you have anybody living or deceased close to you that's an M? Um. Yeah. That there's an M, as in yeah. It, are, are they deceased? Um, are they deceased? Deceased. Yes. Is that a female? Uh huh. And and is it spelled M A? No. Or M I? M E. M E. Okay. Is there an L in that name? There is. Is it like Melissa or Melanie? It's Meldora. Meldora. I, I wouldn't have gotten of. that one. Is this your mom or your grandma? Grandma. Your grandma. Okay. I feel like she's around you. Was there ever a farm or rural area around? Yeah her yes yes she lived on a farm yeah and did you spend time there when you were little when I was very little yes yeah okay so who got hurt on the farm somebody got hurt on the farm oh gosh I wouldn't know I was just there when I was okay. very little who I don't have who, much history who, who is the J like a James or Joseph or it's a Johnny John I was gonna that was my next name who's John <clears throat> Uh, my uncle. Yeah. It, is that her son? Her son, yes. Yeah. And is he deceased? He is. Yeah. I feel like he's with her and he's showing me about somebody got hurt with a blade or something with a either a blade or a pitchfork. I don't know, a blade or, or, a, hmm. or a tractor or something like that. You, you don't know about it. You can okay. ask your family. No. But, but they, they're, that, yeah. they're definitely around you watching over they're they're watching over you now and is this your mom's mom or your no is this your my dad's father's. mom it's my father's mom your dad's mom and your dad's deceased right yes yeah i think he's with them i feel like he's with them as well and okay. then and who who is ed ed or fred or ed or frank hmm I, I don't know anybody. Is there a middle name like this? Name. Not that I'm aware of. Or a last name like this? Uh, um, Ed, um, okay, you don't know. I'm, I, blank, I'm blanking on my grandfather's okay, name. That's a, that's okay. <laughs> not to worry. No, it's not Ed, I, yeah. I, yeah. I appreciate yep. you calling. We're going to take another caller because we don't have a lot of time. But thank you so much for calling. Take care. Okay, and there's no animal you're picking up on or anything no, like that? No, we're, we've we're got to get to the next caller. Sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yep. Hi. Hello? Hello? Hi. Can you hear me? 
Yes, I can. I think there's a delay. Am I on the air? Yeah, yeah, you're on oh. the you're on the air. Hi, just be open about everybody living in deceased. I don't know your number, so I may get your name. I mean, I may get that as well. But just say yes or no and be open about everybody. I'm getting an S or C or K or C. K or C. Um, my sister's name starts with a K. Is she spelled K-A or K-I? No. There's an I. There's two I's in it. it, is, it is it spelled K-I? No. Or is it Kristen? Christy? Kristen? Yes. Yep, Kristen. Kristen. Mm-hmm. Okay, and she's living, Kristen? Yes. Yes. And you're and you're close with her? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who's got the child? Or children? Neither of us. Okay. Is there somebody else uh, that do, do you have somebody a child that crossed over? Was there somebody young in your family? Was there a sibling or a cousin or somebody that crossed over? My cousin did, but he wasn't a child. Okay, when he crossed okay, over. so he wasn't a child, but your cousin but, did cross over. Okay, is is yes, he? Yes, very recently. He's not a J or B initial, is he? A J. Is he spelled J O or J A? He's is he J A mm-hmm. like a James or Jack? Or yes, J- James. James? Okay. Yes. I feel like he's here, and I'm also feeling a child. I don't know who it is. If he somebody lost a child, had abortion, miscarried, I don't know. But James is definitely here, and he, want, he wants, he's thanking everyone for their prayers and for helping healing his crossing over. Wow. Yeah. But did you make it to the funeral? I did not. I wish I did. Yeah, because he's saying it, he knows that you feel bad. That's why I wasn't sure what happened yeah. at the funeral. He knows you feel bad, but he's saying it doesn't matter. It's your intent and your caring that matters most. And somebody there... Well, that means a lot. There's somebody else there that's a J, deceased, a J or G. Yes. And mm-hmm. is, is that your grandfather or his father? It is, yes. Is he a J? And that his first and last his first and last name, James Geronimo. James, yep. yeah. So he's he's here. He the, he met him when he crossed over. Yeah, I, I can imagine. So, so there was a great celebration. I mean, everybody's really happy about it. So you don't need to feel guilty or bad. You just couldn't make it. Sometimes we you know we can't schedule people's deaths and funerals. <laughs> So, um, right. so I just feel like he wants you to know that. And, uh, I, who's looking for a romance, you or your sister? Huh? I don't know. Not me. I'm married. You're married. Is, <laughs> is your sister single? Yes. Is she open to a romance? Um, I would think so. Well, I have a feeling they're saying that there's opportunity coming, but she's got a wall up. She needs to open it up. That's Kristen, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she needs to open up. So, because sometimes we put energetic blocks up and stop the opportunities to come in. Anyway, thank you so much for calling. Take good You're care. You're wonderful. Thank you so much, My, Char. my pleasure. It means be- a lot, Char. Thank you. Oh, God bless you. It means a lot to me as well. Okay, who's next? Seven seven three. Hi, seven Hello. seven. Hi, how are you? Hi. Good. Who are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I need to know who's. Uh, there's somebody who's an Anne or Marie or Mary or M. Um, I have Anne Marie, but on this side. Yeah. Who is that? Uh, that's an aunt. Are, are there health issues around her? Um, not that I'm aware of. I feel like she needs to watch things around health or, I don't know, around her head or her mouth. She might be having issues like this. I feel like it's controllable, though. I'm not worried about that. And who's... Okay. Who's, is there a male who crossed over recently? Yes. 
It, did, did he live with you? No. Was was it family? Yes. It was it like a brother or father? Uh, close to the second one. Like a father or stepfather or what? Father-in-law? Father-in-law. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because whoever the father figure is is here. He wants people to know okay. he, ma- he made it okay. And okay. I feel like he, maybe he didn't believe in an afterlife. Do you know if he did? Okay. Do you know if he did? I believe he did, but he wasn't like a big believer in, in, uh, in you know, organized religion. Yeah, but I well, think he I, was pretty spiritual. I feel like he's pleasantly surprised to be on the other side in a good place. Okay. Not, not everybody goes to a good place. And I'm hearing the name William or Walter. Oh, I'm not sure I know anybody with that name. Is that, do you know if your husband has that? Um, uh, oh, he had uh, a relative whose name in, in uh, English was similar to, like, a, the nickname for William. Like, like Bill. Bill, Bill or Billy or something? Uh, yeah, his my husband's Willie? grandfather Willie? in in English he was called Bill. Bill, that's who that's who's with them. That he's here. Okay. Yeah, he's here. Okay. And, and they're keeping an eye on you guys. And did 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 you or your husband have issues with your back or your legs? Um, I've had some back issues. Yeah, I feel like you, I feel, I'm not allowed to give out medical advice, but I just feel like you need either a good adjuster or chiropractor or somebody in stretching. I just feel okay. like... I, I feel, used to go to a chiropractor for a long time, but I don't go anymore. Well, I can't tell you to go to a chiropractor, but if it were me, that's probably, I would go to a good one, though. There's some really bad ones out there, but there's some really good ones, yeah. too. But I feel like if you don't okay. start stretching and getting things in, in order in your body you're going to have some like that it's stuck you're going to be stuck okay yeah yeah um i just feel like it it just yeah it it just needs some work why are they showing me a school a schoolyard or a school who's a teacher Uh, teacher um i have uh one uh, one relative that I well, actually have two relatives that are former teachers. Are they deceased? No. Okay. Or is there a child in a school? Someone's showing me a little schoolhouse. You don't know what that means. Do you? Uh, I mean, uh, no. But you have people who were teachers. Yeah. And is, are one of them having a problem with walking or their health? Uh, yeah, one has a lot of health issues. Yeah, that they're saying that you, that they need to organize their health, be communicative about their problems and what medications they're on, making sure all medications uh, are coordinated and that they can handle it all in their body because some of the problems are physical and some are side effects. I, okay. That's all I know. I don't. I don't know where this stuff comes. I mean, I know where this stuff comes from, but that's what they're telling me. But their angels and guides are telling me this. So take good care and thank yes, you so I, much for calling. I appreciate it. I do have one other person that has a, a lot of issues with uh, movement and a lot of issues with medication and health problems, but not not affiliated with the. No, I, I the think I. I, I think I've told you everything I'm supposed to. Thank you so much for calling. Thank Bye-bye. you so much. You're my pleasure, sweetheart. Do we have one more caller? Okay, one more caller. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm terrific. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for asking. Okay, so I just need you to be open about uh, everybody living and deceased. And are you making a change around your home or are you moving? Uh, I think about it all the time. You want to move? I'm not sure if I want to, but I think about moving. Do, do, moving to another area or moving from within where you are? I think from within where I am. Okay, so I feel like the the real... Do you own a house? 
I I live in a rental house. You live in a rental house. Okay. Okay. So I don't know. I just feel like there's going to be a change around where you're living. I don't know why, and maybe that's why you're thinking about it. I don't think it's bad. I think it's good. And who's the L? I think it's who's L or E L. 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 My father was. Don't don't say the name. Was he spelled L E or L A? No. Or L O. L. Oh. Like Lewis or? Yeah, it was Lewis. Lewis, your dad's with you? And he's saying that there's oh, going to be a, yeah. Did, did you have issues with him? Oh, yes. He's Because he's apologizing. <clears throat> uh, he knows wonderful. he was abusive in some ways. And I think the reason he's come in and not the other person you really wanted to come in is because he's trying to elevate his soul to a better place. And he's asking forgiveness. That's wonderful. He's asking forgiveness. Was he abusive? I uh, verbally abusive, but I have forgiven him. Okay, good. As long as, so he need now that he knows it, he can move on. Who is the alcoholic? Uh, there, basically no alcoholics in my life, but uh, uh, verbally abusive. Okay, that's okay. I mean, that's not okay, but. No, it isn't okay. No, but but, do, but you know what? It's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, he he's. I I feel like you need to. There's somebody may be around you that's alcoholic, or that you may be connected to someone alcoholic. Or somebody's substance okay. substance abuse. Is there somebody with substance abuse? Um. Basically, I have to stay. I just. I'm very conscious of staying away from alcoholics and okay, and abusive good. people. Good. Well, I feel like that maybe. I don't know, there's somebody you're going to have to be careful of, or maybe you're going to be sympathetic, <clears throat> but do you need to watch them? No, and who no, is... I'm, ve- I'm very careful about it. Okay, um, and do you know Bob or Robert or Bobby? I have a Bob who's a dear friend of mine in Palm Springs. Yeah, I like him. I love him. And are, are you supposed a, to visit? A... Are you supposed to visit him? Pardon me? Are you supposed to visit him? I... I think of visiting him all the time. He lives in Palm Springs. Yeah, I feel like you're going to visit him and see him. He's somebody you can trust. He's not the one with the alcohol, though. Maybe he's got to be. Uh, he is, is he an alcoholic? He is a re- he's a recovered alcoholic for many years, yes. Oh, okay. Then maybe that's why I'm getting it like that. Because I didn't see, I saw it for alcohol, and I said, no, he's not, a, whatever. So he's a good friend, though. I like him a lot. And he's someone he's, you, he's you can bit, count on. Thank you so much. I'm so no. sorry, but we got to run. But thank you so much. Go thank visit. you. I see you there, but boy, the weather there, right, is very, very hot. It's like 108 or something. Well, I'm in, I'm in Arizona, too, so it's hot here. Oh, it's hot all over. Okay, well, thank you so much for calling. I love you with I, all my heart. You you really are a wonderful teacher for me and, oh and my an goodness. inspiration. Well, I love you, too, and I'm grateful to you for calling in oh, and for good. following my work and for watching Char Vision. Oh, I do. Okay, God bless I, you. I you. watch. Oh, that's okay. I'm sorry, Tony, like, had a slip of the finger there. So sorry. I, she was going to give me a nice compliment. Shame on you, Tony. Just teasing. I'll do it. Okay. You're beautiful. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to thank Tony for all you do for me. Mwah. And I want to thank Nicole in the office for helping organize this. And uh, Dr. Liliana Wolf, who was amazing. And gosh, uh you guys out there who are watching Char Vision, you know, it means the world to me and Sunny too. And you're helping me help others. And that's why I'm here on the earth. And so thank you for allowing me to fulfill my karma. And um, let's say a, an extra special prayer for those kids at the border. And hopefully they'll reunite with their parents once again. God bless you. And remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Bye-bye.